and he is here to discuss his US tour and more. We do also know that recently he just won next race at the Headies. And of course, he has a lot more in store for us coming up this year. The one and only Mayoku of DMW. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good to have you. Good to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you too. categorically say you are a fine bubble? Because in your song, you said, Namoni, be, be fine, fine bubble. bubble. Yeah, like, I, I don't think I've made that much to be fine. I'm getting there. Bro. Uh, I'll set you up before the end of this. No, time. do you think I'm fine? Uh -huh. You're a fine boy. Don't You're even go boy. there and play. You're so handsome. Nila knows how to win somebody. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let's move on to your tour. 16 <laughs> cities, six weeks. You even came back halfway for the headies. It's yeah. been a very, very busy year for you. Give us an update on exactly how your tour went. Um, I met, like, newer fans. Like, people I didn't even know that would like me or Kun's music. I went to, I was in San Diego and I saw some white people there. At first, I told my manager that, oh man, we have to skip some songs yeah. because I don't think it's people. I was performing Shade and they were singing just So, so wow. I, like, I had fun, to be honest. I had fun. I had time to try American food because I really don't. Eat. Okay, what was your favorite? And you know, Mayo, nah, that's actually got, true. Nah, I forgot, man. It's rice and stew. That's it's not Mayo, it's just rice and stew. Rice, beans, if I want to try, I'll do a goosey or something. But, <laughs> that's just, but you don't really, you don't play like that. I don't before. like, I, I hate trying. But in that place, I tried burger and some other things. So what was your favorite? It's just burger, man. <laughs> because that one looks like bread and meat or something. So, <laughs> so, oh, that wow. one's just, so you went to 16 states? Yes, 16. What kept you going? I'm sure there must have been days when you were really physically, emotionally burnt out. Yeah. How were you able to sustain yourself? I don't know, man. First of all, I think the money. <laughs> <laughs> money is the motivation. But then again, I really wanted to meet new people. Like, there's, for an artist, I don't think there's ever a point where you get to that, oh, you've met all your... Like, I wanted to meet these people here, these people here. There are sometimes I, I go on, like, six-hour flights. We'll be there, sleeping, wake up, tired, everything. But we still did it. And we tell God I finished it. I'm still going on another one next year. So. That's amazing. Where to this time around? I don't know. Canada. Also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, definitely when that time comes, I hope we'll be the first to get that scoop. Yep. But looking back at America, what would you say was your favorite city to visit? Which performance did you like the most? Where did the audience receive you the best? Um, I think I'll say um, Minnesota, Rhode Island, Dallas, Houston, New York. Okay, yeah, I'll talk about them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll say Minnesota because there were no Nigerians. It was like a Liberian show. I was shocked that they sang all my songs from the first one, from a record straight to Baba. Baba. Wow. wow. Well, li Liberians all through. Wow. And not Nigerians there at all. That was Minnesota, yeah. Mad. That's amazing. Sick. Are there still moments when you still get shocked by how much you've come? You know, don't you ever just look back yes, and think, uh, oh my, of how, how did I get here, really? Of course. Like, uh, like three days or four days ago, I was in Ghana for Ghana Miss Niger. I know they, they know some of my songs, but Bobo, I didn't know that was a little bit big there. See, when I performed that song, I saw Ghanaians scream. I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think, right? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I had fun there too. Yeah. That's good. Now, let's go to halfway through your tour where you came yeah. back to Nigeria, right back to your city, Lagos, for the mm. Headies, mm. and you won next rated, best next rated. First yeah. of all, congratulations. That's Thank you huge. very much. How did that feel? Were you expecting it? No, to be honest, man, the person that made me travel was San Frank. Because I felt like, why should I leave? This old thing because I, I, I think I was supposed to do 18 cities because I broke my stuff, I didn't do two. So I was there, he just told me that we stand a chance, so it's not like a show, but let's just give it. So we did, and the risks turned out to make sense. I didn't, if you, I didn't, <laughs> how did you feel the moment they announced? And the I didn't even hear it. Are you serious? I was supposed to perform after, so I had this. Um, earpiece in my ear, so I couldn't hear anything. So when I was close to the stage, Sam told me to leave that place because he saw my hand, I was already yeah. shaking with the mic. <laughs> so he said I should leave, they took me back. So when they called, I just saw people storm where I was to pick me out because I didn't even hear the announcement. Wow. Wow. Was my, I didn't even get to give my speech, it was just like everybody were on the stage. And you know our own piece now, we're moving. Yeah. 
Again. Like a legend. <laughs> Imagine how, how you must have felt, how emotional it is. Usually yeah. with these things of winning awards, sometimes you have a speech planned in your head. Yeah. You get so overwhelmed by the moment that you... Do you know I never everything. had a speech planned? Right? Really? <laughs> I never had a speech. Because I never... I don't know. I, I didn't want to... To ginger yourself. Yeah, and then... go and jinx anything. So I get what I just... you mean. Left. But speaking of speeches, and David O's speech at the Hedys, there's something yeah. that he said, which is that we rise by lifting others. Yeah. And David has done a lot for you in your career and everything to do with that. How has he helped you and also brought you to the level at which you are at today? I think my meeting with David is like pre-planned from yeah. God. It's like preordained because the way David is is the same way my mom is. I know so many people that we are not related at all. Yeah. And my mom has tried even... When she didn't have anything, she tried her best. So this same David, we are all taking that legacy from him. Me, Dremo, Peruzzi, everybody. In our own capacity, the way we can yeah. help anybody, we are doing it. And David has tried for me, for... It's, my own help is, is obvious. Like, mm. nobody can say, mm. but if you don't ever try for this guy. Mm. And me too, I hope one day I'll be able to... In fact, you can even try for us. Very yeah, soon. Before the end of the show, you were yeah, insulting my phone yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> try for us. So, the day, Techno was busy dashing people 500k on Instagram. Of course, blog, sometimes like I'm always in that mood. But Please, when are you going I to really be on the mood? I don't, when are you going to be in the mood? I don't. Like, <laughs> and I like that kind of mood. I want to be a part so of it. just like well, Christmas Day coming. Right my own are once in a year. I don't do for this year. Maybe next year. Baba, Baba, leave that kind of mood. Let's go back to the very beginning when you decided to leave your career in the bank. Yeah. At the point when you decided to resign your job, did you know that music was going to be this profitable? Did you see yourself where you are today? No. No, I, I've always, like, everybody has always seen themselves in this light. Optimistically, you always hope that. But I never saw myself here this quick. I felt like, me, I used to calculate. So I feel like before you get here, you have to take like four years in this industry. But mine just took. It wasn't even up to two years before I got to this place, so I never thought about it that way at all, at all. Leaving the bank in something was just a huge risk that I did and it paid off. Because I wouldn't be talking about this if I was just yeah. so. I get yeah. what you mean. Now, one thing that people love about you and love about DMW as a whole is the family vibe that you guys have going on. Mm -hmm. You guys are together 24-7. You want to turn up. Is you guys turning up together. Yeah. You're just brothers. You do everything together from work to play to everything. Mm -hmm. Give us a scoop and take us into that relationship. What is it like having that second family? Um, like I said, I think my nature allows those type of things. Because before, before Dremo was signed, I already knew I was going to get the deal with David because we already spoke. Yeah. But I had like five songs with Dream already. Just, we are just that, I'm just that type of person that we just play. When we vibe, we work. Dream 2 is like that. Peruzzi 2 is like that. Yonder is like... It's just that we are lucky to have those type of people around so everybody does that. So our own side is just love. And you have a new member now, and that's Sinzu. Yeah. How's that going Sinzu, as well? Yeah, I, I was with Sinzu in, in the US too. Amazing. We worked too. I think he has a song on Dremel's EP too. Yeah. Like when we, when we like you, we like you. If we don't, too. So what are you guys like when you don't like somebody? <laughs> we know, you know that. We don't have to tell you. <laughs> you like. Wow. Okay. Speaking of not liking somebody, there are certain yeah. people who have been or who are in your position that don't like where they are. Now there are certain celebrities mm -hmm. where we constantly advocate for mental health, and we know there are certain celebrities who have dealt with depression and suicide. We've had the likes of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, and these are the ones that have been publicized because they are public figures. Yeah. Now there are other Nigerian celebrities who have admitted that at certain times they've dealt with depression, dealt with suicidal thoughts. Exactly, we had we had yeah. T-bills at some point. Have you been in that position? And if yes, how are you able to deal with it? Uh, me, I, I would really say it's depression. It was like a road to depression. But, I, like, I have older friends. I think that thing helps me a lot. I have, most of my friends are like 35, 32 women, actually. Just, just, don't judge me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Sorry. know what I'm <laughs> Okay, I'm fine. Like, I have a, like, a lot of older people I talk to. A lot. I really don't hide when I have problems because I can't deal with them a lot. So I have so many people I talk to when I talk to experiences. And okay. I just feel like you just talk to people, man, if you okay. keep it. And I think that's actually what we're trying to advocate for. Yeah. If you're out there and you're dealing with suicidal thoughts or with depression of any form, please talk. 
talk to people, there's definitely help if only you'd open up and reach out. And for people, sometimes they won't always talk. If you notice a change in people's character, people who used to be social, start to withdraw. If you notice a change in characters, please, as much as possible, reach out. The world would be a better place if we are kinder to one another. Absolutely. Now, yes. let's move on to today in history. First of all, Mayaku, have you ever donated blood? Yes, once. What was it like? When I was in university, I remember they told me that if I do it, when I need blood, sometimes they will mm. give me or something <clears throat> for free or something. Okay, well, today is World Blood Donor Day on the 14th of June. So I am challenging everyone out there, you, you and you, go out and try and donate blood. It's such a good thing to do. But at the same There's time, be careful. There's actually an organization that is running that as mm -hmm. well. And one that we know that we can guarantee at Haima underscore health on Instagram. So they're going to be having a donor drive today from 12, I think, up until 5. I don't have all the details, but you can follow them on Instagram at Haima underscore health so they're out there encouraging people to donate blood and yeah. they screen the blood and just basically promoting awareness and be careful after we now found out that we have illegal uh blood donor banks here in lagos no high my health i can say is <laughs> exactly not illegal because we've exactly. had them on the show as well and exactly. we constantly push for people to donate but make sure that your blood levels are also okay before you go to donate <laughs> <laughs> um, to enjoy more of this our will get videos when you just watch Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.